Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Augusta Westland loses a prototype AW609, Boeing Lockheed Martin disappointed in LRSB decision, FAA issues internal guidance for small UAV operation. I'm Brie Krause, it's November 2nd, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. It has been reported from a number of sources that one of Augusta Westland's AW609 prototypes crashed on Friday morning, resulting in the death of its two pilots and a complete loss of the aircraft. The AW609 is intended to be a civilian tilt rotor aircraft based on the same principles as the Boeing Osprey V-22. The AW609 is a much smaller aircraft intended for corporate travel that combines the need for vertical lift and a higher cruise speed than is offered by a conventional helicopter. Augusta Westland issued the following statement, quote, Vinmechanica Augusta Westland confirms the loss of one prototype AW609 tilt rotor and the tragic loss of two pilots. The company's deepest sympathies are with the families. Vinmechanica Augusta Westland is working with the relevant authorities to determine the cause of the accident, end quote. The aircraft was on display at the Heli Expo 2015, held in Orlando, Florida earlier this year. One prototype for the aircraft was being tested in Italy, and a second prototype is based in Arlington, Texas. ANN reported in September that the aircraft had achieved a significant amount of flight test time and had recently claimed a speed record over a point-to-point 1,000-kilometer -point course in 2 hours and 18 minutes. We'll keep you posted when we receive updates. As was perfectly predictable, the announcement that Northrop Grumman was chosen to develop the new U.S. Air Force long-range strike bomber, Boeing and Lockheed Martin, who had joined together and also bid on the program, expressed disappointment with the decision and released the following statement, quote, The Boeing and Lockheed Martin team is disappointed by today's announcement. We will have further discussions with our customer before determining our next steps, end quote. According to the Air Force, the Air Force Program Office conducted design efforts with industry over the last three years to ensure requirements for the aircraft were stable and allowed the use of mature systems and existing technology while still providing desired capability. Also predictable was a statement from Wes Bush, Chairman, Chief Executive Officer, and President Northrop Grumman. He said, quote, the Air Force has made the right decision for our nation's security, end quote. After the break, FAA releases internal document for small UAV operation. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com the KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Last week, the FAA issued internal guidance on unmanned aircraft operations in the National Airspace System in a 17-page document. As can be imagined, the 17-page document covers a lot of issues. The agency differentiates between public and civil UAVs, as well as what constitutes a hobbyist. The notice says, quote, most small UAS are owned by individuals and cannot be used for commercial purposes. Individuals flying for hobby or recreation should follow safety guidelines outlined in Advisory Circular 9157A, end quote. This is another unfortunate case where the FAA publishes internal guidelines that will be administered by various FAA regions without the benefit of published regulations. Because the guidelines reference AC 9157A, at least hobbyists have something to refer to. 
However, an advisory circular is not regulatory. Whether this internal guidance on the operation of small UAVs will clear things up or muddy the water remains to be seen. Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off of If you've ever done an ERC model flying or ever wondered just how complex it can get, this video of a giant RC Vulcan bomber will amaze you. Search Giant Scale RC Vulcan on YouTube. After these messages, another municipality creates their own UAV rules. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Ocean City, New Jersey City Council has passed on first read an ordinance that would ban the operation of UAVs within five miles of Ocean City Airport. Nearly the entire city lies within that five-mile circle. The FAA has given approval to Gulfstream for the installation of the soon-to-be-required communication and surveillance system known as Future Air Navigation System on Gulfstream 5 aircraft. This system addresses the ability of air traffic control to handle increased aircraft traffic. NASA is accepting applications from university students to fly their science and technology experiments to the edge of space on a scientific balloon mission. NASA is planning for a fall 2016 launch for the next high-altitude student platform mission. EASA has certified Garmin GNC 255 NAVCOM and GTR 225 COM series radios for European registered helicopters. This certification reduces installation time and the cost associated with installation of these radios in a wide variety of helicopter types in Europe. Singer and songwriter Dirk Bentley is a licensed pilot who values business aircraft and utilizes business aviation. He will be a featured speaker during the opening general session at MBAA's Business Aviation and Convention Exhibition, November 17th through the 19th in Vegas. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The U.S. Department of Transportation has said that Seaport Airlines must continue to serve Tupelo, Mississippi through December 28th in order to not leave the city with no scheduled air carrier service. The Portland, Oregon-based carrier had sent a letter to the DOT on August 27th requesting that the agency allow it to discontinue service to Tupelo by November 13th and television station WTVA reports that the small carrier canceled flights to the city last week. However, the DOT says that it is in violation of Seaport's Essential Air Services contract between the DOT and Seaport. An order sent to Seaport on September 26 said that the department must prohibit the airline from terminating such service for 30 days beyond the end of the 90-day notice period, which would be December 28th. A spokesperson for the DOT said that the early cancellation of the flights is a breach of contract. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday 
with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.